look in St. Joseph this morning, and you can see it is a calm start right now. A little bit warmer, but you may want to grab that umbrella before you head out the door. That's for sure. We do have some changes in our forecast. Nothing dramatic, but a little rain back. Abby Weffler is in for Carrie this morning. Good morning, Abby. Good morning. Yes, we are seeing some rain already on the radar now about weekend rain chances in minutes. Abby, thank you. This morning, several children are hurt after a woman in China attacked them with a knife. Police say the woman went on a stabbing and slashing spree, injuring at least 14 kindergartners as they walked off the playground. Security guards and school staff were able to restrain that woman. A number of the children were taken to the hospital, their conditions unknown at this time. A nationwide manhunt happening right now. The FBI searching for who is sending dangerous packages to several prominent Democrats. They are now treating this investigation as a case of domestic terrorism. Investigators discovered at least 10 partially and potentially explosive devices from California to New York City. All of the packages had the very same return address. Florida Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Each one of the bombs or suspected bombs appeared to be homemade. Officials call them rudimentary but functional. Right now, forensics experts are analyzing them, looking for any clues as to who may have sent the packages. They say some items inside the packages could be key in finding the suspect. We'll tell you what, coming up in just 30 minutes. Happening right now, 800 troops are getting ready to protect the southern border of the U.S., and the Defense Department is considering to send more. They're helping Border Patrol and custom workers stop any immigrants from crossing illegally. This as a migrant caravan of about 5,000 people marched north through Mexico, seeking asylum in the U.S. President Trump calls the caravan a national emergency and promises to stop it. U.S. troops will not be allowed to apprehend illegal immigrants, but will work on other aspects of border security, including reinforcing barriers. The 800 troops joined the roughly 2,000 National Guardsmen already dispatched to the border back in April. This morning, a three-year-old boy is dead after police say he accidentally shot himself. Logansport police saying the boy was likely playing with a gun when it happened yesterday afternoon. They say a babysitter found him and called 911. Responders flew him to the hospital where he later died. Now, police are saying the boy's father left this boy in the care of the sitter while he was running errands. The babysitter claimed she did not know there were any guns in the house. Neither the babysitter nor the father lives at this home. And Leanne officials are also around the state reacting to this shooting. Urging gun owners, Bob, to protect their firearms. If not, someone will get hurt or the guns could turn up missing. Listen to this number. Indianapolis police say more than 800 guns have been reported stolen in the city just this year. And the issue is getting worse. Indianapolis officers say six out of seven homicides were committed with guns. A lot of the times the gun is illegally owned. Police say it's harder to track down a suspect when the crime weapon is stolen. They say if you ever have a gun stolen or missing, it's important to report it right away. And a former Elkhart police detective or an actual active police detective is going to be in court today. 49-year-old Scott Hupp broke into his ex-wife's home from earlier this year. The ex-wife claims Hupp also engaged in other disturbing behavior, including putting a tracking device in her car and making dozens of unwanted calls. She says it happened between March and July. Now, police say Hupp has been an officer with the Elkhart Police Department for 20 years. He is currently on paid leave. It's been more than 60 years, but now Master Sergeant Charles McDaniel is returning to Indiana. All new this morning, this video shows the McDaniel family greeting the casket draped in an American flag at the Indianapolis International Airport yesterday. His remains came to the U.S. from North Korea several months ago with 55 other boxes. Officials say McDaniel's dog tag was with the remains. A few for the master sergeant is set for Saturday, something his family says they never thought would happen. This morning, Vice President Pence now promising that an Air Force base in the Florida Panhandle will be rebuilt in its entirety. This after the Tyndall Air Force Base was devastated by Hurricane Michael over two weeks ago. The vice president toured the damage yesterday. He says he was humbled. The air base suffered catastrophic damage with roofs torn from airplane hangars and cars tossed around. It was evacuated before the storm hit. More than 3,600 men and women are stationed at that base. The new Elkhart City budget is now passed. Leaders managed to pass it last night before sending it on to the state. But the decision comes amid some controversy, even disappointment from some council members. The council says it's frustrated because the mayor brought up proposals at the very last minute. Many say they didn't have a chance to look over the proposals that contained cuts they didn't agree with. The biggest cut being the complete elimination of the Tolson Center. 
Council members say the changes may anger the public. The mayor says the last minute changes were to accommodate all concerns raised by council members. He says he's not made any backroom deals. Happening right now, legislation to stop doctors from overprescribing opioids is moving forward. The Group Physician Consortium on Opioid Treatment is teaming up with Congresswoman Jackie Walorski to promote a bill focusing on the issue. President Trump signed it into law this week as part of a nationwide effort to end opioid abuse. The bill expands Medicare coverage for opioid treatment services, provides access to non-opioid alternative technology, and gives doctors better treatment tools. The group plans to continue discussing their ideas with other elected officials sometime in the future. Well, now is a good time to check your cabinets for any expired or unwanted prescriptions. That's because tomorrow is National Drug Take Back Day. WSBT 22's Bree Isom is in the studio this morning. And Bree, it's important we don't just throw our pills away. Bob and Leanne, please tell me if people just put their pills in the trash. In the studio, Bree Isom, WSBT 22 News. 16 of those doctors, 16 doctors alone, prescribe more than 20.3 million pills illegally. Unbelievable number of those words from Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Coming up, what he says he's doing to try to stop the opioid-related crimes. And a local woman loses everything in this house fire. Look at these flames. It happened after she was cleaning her fireplace. Coming up, what firefighters want you to know about this fire to help protect your own? And we are waking up to some areas dealing with some sprinkles. Pretty quiet in Elkhart right now with a light breeze. I am talking about rain chances throughout the entire weekend. I'll time it out for you next.